Hello everyone, it's week two of the Colour Families prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium, and the challenge for this week is Tone on Tone. So let me just explain what that means. Um, tone on Tone is colour layering, um, using either um, different values of one single colour or perhaps a couple of colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel um, to create your, your piece, either a background or a finished piece of artwork, whatever it is you are going to do. Um, you can see here that I've got some buttons in front of me in various shades of um, blues and greens. Blue and green are next to each other on the colour wheel so this would be a great um, way to incorporate tone on tone into um, a piece of artwork. I've also got this um, picture here that's come out of um, the um, Chemistry, Chemistry World magazine. This again is another fantastic example of tone on tone. We've just got various shades of, of blues, um, a tiny bit of uh, blue-grey in in here as well but all the um, same colours in different um, values. So let me just bring in um, the colour wheel of course um, I couldn't find my colour wheel anywhere let me just get one here on my iPad. So um, just to explain it even further, let me just enlarge this slightly. The lettering might be, um, the wording might be rather blurred, but you'll get the gist. So for instance, you could use blue, blue, green and green. Um, that would count as tone on tone. You could use, you know, blue and purples here. Blue, blue, purple, purple. That would count as tone on tone. What you wouldn't be able to do, um, or we wouldn't accept um, for this week's challenge, is you using blue, blue, purple and then adding, maybe orange to it because that would be a complementary um, colour. So we're going to be quite strict this week, you know, have a look um, at your colour wheel um, if you have one or, you know, look one up online and choose your colours accordingly. I mean, you've got lots of different choices. You could choose um, orange, yellow, yellow and yellow, green. Um, you could choose, you know, maybe um, red, red, purple and orange, red. Um, so just have a think about the colours that you might want to use. Now for today's um, video I'm going to be doing a process called bokeh b-o-k-e-h I'll leave it um, on screen bokeh is um, a photography technique where the photo blurs and again just to um, show you some examples here are some really good um, examples three, these three here of bokeh and also um, this one um, I've done this technique before we did um, oh gosh we did this in the group about three years ago it was hugely popular but I know that somebody um, had posted some something in the bokeh technique following my um, original video a few weeks ago and people were, were really interested in it so I thought it might be a really good one to do for this week. Now you can see here I've pulled out three different colours of my Distress Oxide inks. I've got Bundled Sage, Faded Jeans, um, Broken China. I'm already covered um, in ink and I'm just going to be using a regular piece of 300 GSM um, smooth cardstock for my substrate. Um, this is just a piece of parchment paper to catch the excess ink. I've also got um, my blending tools. You could use any kind of sponge to do this and I will give uh, uh, alternatives for those of you that want to do the bokeh technique and you know don't have distress um, oxide inks. Now first of all I am going to glove up because I find that distress um, oxides are very very difficult to get um, off your hands so here we go I'm going to put my gloves on first um, and then let's get started with this um, with this background um, I'm going to start off with the darkest color first so this is um, faded jeans in fact if I take these off and then you'll be able to see um, the colors here above me so bundled sage, faded jeans and broken china are the colours that I'm going to be um, using. So let's start off with this one here. And all I'm going to do is just randomly um, add some colour. You can see that that's already producing sort of kind of um, a bokeh effect. I'm just going to add some colour here like this. Don't worry about any marks that you get if you're doing this with um, distress oxides because the more you add, um, the more the colours will blend. I'm going to go in with the um, next darkest colour, which is the Broken China. And we'll add some of some of this. We'll have some over here as well. And as I've said, don't worry if it looks really blotchy at this, this stage, it doesn't matter. Um, and as I've said, I'll give you alternatives as well for those of you that don't have um, distress oxides. Perhaps we can try, you know, a couple of other um, products. And then we can have some of the bundled sage. 
um, these colours go absolutely beautifully together and because they're next to each other on the colour wheel we've got um, no danger of um, adding mud. So now what I'm going to do is just keep going over this just to smooth um, things out. You need to do this um, in, in layers I find with the Distress Inks. And I'm just going to keep going until I get to smooth and even blend. Um, just such a fun way to use your Distress Oxides. So again, we can add some of this here, just trying to blend those colours together. You can see that it's really coming together quite quickly um, now. It doesn't take long at all. So here's my finished background um, and that's, you know, perfectly well blended for um, how I need. Now, just to give you some ideas as to other types of things you could use, you could use any type of dye ink. So whether it's the um, regular distress inks um, or any other type of, of dye ink, um, you could use watercolours, for example. You could even blend um, an acrylic paint background if you wanted to. Now, the other thing you're going to need for this technique is some kind of stencil. Um, this is one that I've made myself out of a piece of uh, craft cardstock. So that's what it looks like on the clean side. You can see I've already used this one. And I've just uh, punched various circles using my punches. Um, so if you've got um, your own punches, it's really easy to make your own homemade stencil. If not, um, then you can use a shop-bought stencil. This is one of the creative um, expressions um, mini stencils. I think this is called bubbles these are really inexpensive about um 175 two pounds they were when i bought these and so what i'm going to do you will also need by the way um some kind of um white ink and i think pigment ink is the best for this i've got three different um brands my personal favorite is the um brilliance um moonlight white the one that i find doesn't work very well at all is the tim holtz distress ink in picket fence it's just not pigmented enough and you can can just barely see the ink um, whereas this is quite um, a strong one you could also use a very very small amount of um, acrylic paint maybe watered down slightly because what you don't want is this to be um, so strong that it takes away from that um, bokeh effect so I am going to use um, a sponge to um, apply my ink so let's ink it up and what I'm going to do is just um, make some random circles so I'm just going to blot on like this oh hang on be careful that you hold your stencil firmly firmly down otherwise it will shift like mine did um, just then in fact it's probably better to do it like this it's probably less likely um, to shift if you do it like like this so dab it on rather than do it in in a circular motion and just look at that how cool is that now where we've got that mistake there it doesn't matter we can just add another one and just overlap it and then that mistake there um, is gone and so I'm just going to keep adding random circles all over my page and I want some hanging off the page um, some in the middle of it just try and be um, as random as you can about this it's a beautiful beautiful technique and really effective in in my opinion as i say the last time we did this in the group which was about three years ago it was really popular um, but of course you know you can interpret this prompt in any way um, you like as long as you're using colors that are tone on tone um, that's fine so i'm just going to keep going over the whole of my background i don't want too many of the larger ones and try not to overthink it like i'm i'm doing here just pop them down um, randomly and as I say do try and get some to overlap um, as well so we'll try and get some of these to overlap like like this because that's a, a really nice effect as you can as you can see isn't that background just absolutely gorgeous I just love this technique so much I just think it's incredibly effective now I said I'd show you an alternative to using white ink um, this is another um, background that I've created using distress oxides um, as I've said you can use any dye ink watercolors if you want to acrylic paints um, you'll have to use something water soluble for this next um, technique I'm going to show you though I've used um, four colors of distress oxides I wanted to do something with 
with um, more of a vintage feel for because I know that we've got many vintage lovers in the group. I've used antique linen, fossilised amber, frayed burlap and walnut stain. So again, sort of, you know, all um, colours in the same colour family. Um, this time um, I want to try um, a white pencil and a baby wipe technique. Um, you could use something like a Derwent um, Intense um, pencil. Um, the Stabilo Woody is just absolutely perfect because this is really soft and um, really creamy. Um, and this here is a Prima um, oil pastel, which again blends absolutely beautifully. So these are some alternatives. If you don't have any of those, um, just use a baby wipe. Now, what have I done with the stencil I prepared a second ago? Hang on a minute, I've lost it. Here we go. I just prepared um, a new one because I didn't want to contaminate um, this with the previous colours um, that I used. Now, you could use just a baby wipe on its own to remove some of that colour. You will have to be really, really careful with this. Um, this is only um, 300 GSM cardstock, and if you apply too much pressure, um, your paper will peel. But you can see that I'm getting um, this most gorgeous um, bokeh effect just using my baby wipe. Um, now, this does doesn't work so well in the paler areas. Um, so what I'm going to do there, um, let me just show you, um, is I'm going to use my Stabilo Woody. These are just um, kids um, crayons, so you, you might have something similar um, in your stash. Um, so let me just show you how this works. What I'm going to do is just apply some of the white crayon, just, just like this, quite a, quite a good amount. I'm just going to um, pop my finger on the baby wipe just to dampen it slightly, and I'm just going to to blend this into the background and this will give um, a similar effect. Just look at that. And I love the fact that if you use the white, um, you get um, this gorgeous colour. And of course, if you use just the baby wipe um, on its own, it's slightly more um, yellowy. So I just think, you know, a mix of the two is just absolutely wonderful for this. So I'm just going to continue um, playing around with my background. And as soon as I'm done, um, I'll be straight back to show you. Um, but this is all, all I'm doing. Um, another nice thing, is if you do the white um, and then use the baby wipe on its own just for the next one, because then you get two completely different tones. And I think that's a, a beautiful effect. Isn't that just absolutely gorgeous? I love it in this colourway. I think it's absolutely beautiful. Oh my goodness me, I am just um, hooked on this technique again. Now, of course, I couldn't resist trying something else. This one here was done um, by just scribbling on Prima colours, just willy-nilly. These are the colours I used. So an, uh, a dark blue, a mid blue and a purple. And I just scribbled pigment on willy-nilly, um, just very randomly, not overthinking it. Um, and then I used a baby wipe just to blend the colour. Then I use the baby wipe to remove the colour through the stencil. There's no white um, pencil in this. This is just purely the baby wipe only. And that's the effect I got. In fact, it worked better just using the baby wipe with the Prima um, oil pastels than it does with Distress um, Oxides. This is the same um, paper. I think that's absolutely um, beautiful. I also experimented um, with one of my masterboard backgrounds. Um, I used this background here. I think this is just absolutely um, gorgeous. Um, so I photocopied it onto lightweight cardstock. I think it was 160 GSM cardstock, which is about the thickest that will go through my photocopier at home. Um, that's what the background um, looks like. Um, this is half of the sheet and um, I cut it into two. So we've got one quarter um, and I use the Brilliance um, ink again for this. I think that's absolutely beautiful. So I've now got several gorgeous, gorgeous bokeh backgrounds um, to use in various projects. I don't want to do a project um, with you today, so now the hardest decision is deciding which one I want to use. So as soon as I've decided, I'll be straight back. Right, decision um, made. I'm going with this one here, the more vintage style. I've pulled out this, which I think is the perfect um, focal image to go with it. What I do want to do um, is just distress um, the outside of this just a tad using my, my scissors. In fact, let me just move that out of the way and then I can um, just pour, 
pour all the debris over my bin. Um, I've ordered one of those distressing um, little tools um, just to save my scissors. It hasn't arrived yet, um, so hence I'm still using using this. But the, uh, I must admit the scissors work an absolute treat. I'm just always scared that I'm going to blunt them by doing this. Um, but I'm just going to go all the way um, around like like so. And then I do want to um, ink around the edges. Now, can I get um, around the corners without um, destroying them? Let's let's see. Here we go. This um, image is just so gorgeous. Um, here we are. And then I do want to um, ink around the edges of this. What colour do I want to use? I think I'm going to use frayed, um, frayed burlap. Now, which is the tool with frayed burlap on it? I think it's this one, this one here. So we'll just go around here like this just to, just to frame it. Now, I'm wondering whether I want to do the same with the um, background of the card I made as well. Um, no, I think I'm just going to um, ink around this one with um, Walnut Stain. I think this is the Walnut Stain one that I used. So let's just frame frame this one using, using this here. I'm wondering whether I should have perhaps um, rounded the corners. I can do that later if I decide that it doesn't look quite right. Um, don't have to do it straight straight away but by um, adding ink now it will just draw attention to the centre as well um, and just put everything um, into perspective for me. Um, I just find that this doing this first really helps so there we go that's, um, that's that done. Then I've got a piece of um, burlap, what have I done with it? Um, just this burlap here and I am just going to pop my butterflies on here like this. Now, I'm thinking that I'm just going to take this off to my sewing machine and add some stitching um, around here like that. Um, do I do it or am I going to run the risk of uh, ruining it? Um, let's go and try. So you can see I've added the stitching to my card and I've glued it down then to this piece of burlap. So I only added the stitching to the card itself, not through the burlap. Burlap's a bit stretchy and I find that it tends to warp. So I always glue it down afterwards. And so I'm just going to um, pop that down there like that. I'm going to use some of my three in one again to do that. Um, we'll just apply some over the back like this. not too close to the edges because I just don't want it to um, bleed through where you can see it. And to be honest, I like mine having a bit of um, textural dimension um, as well, not being completely flat to the page. Um, so there we go. That should, that should, that should do, do that. Um, and then I might need to weight this down underneath a heavy book for a second or two. Um, now, do I want that? Yeah, I want it to go fairly central, I think. And as I've said, I'm just going to weight that down for a second or two. And then I've just got one more embellishment that um, I want to add. But how gorgeous is that? That's how my card is looking so far. I just absolutely love that bokeh background. I think it's beautiful. And my final embellishment to cover up this green butterfly here because it's not sitting well with the tone on tone theme. I'm going to add this larger one here, which as you can see, um, is the same butterfly that, um, that we've got um, here. Just absolutely love this. And I'll leave the link to the video showing how I made these butterflies. I think that is absolutely gorgeous. Um, this was a free download from the Graphics um, Fairy. Now, I'm going to use some of my um, Finnebear Art Basics Gel um, Medium. Um, you could use um, Fabri-Tac probably or maybe Diamond Glaze. Um, just because I've got some texture going on here, I've decided that I'm going to use the um, gel medium, the heavy gel medium. Is it is it heavy gel medium? What's this called? Yeah, heavy body gel medium. Um just to make sure that this um, sticks and so I'm just going to pop that down there over that green butterfly 
Um, let me just make sure that I've got that um, in the centre of these two. If we've got some seepage, which you can see here, I'm not worried about it because this dries um, completely clear. Let me just put the lid um, back on back on this. And I'm just going to have to leave that now to set. The gel medium, the heavy body gel medium, um, takes quite a long time for the glue to dry. Um, but that will well and truly hold that in place. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. I love it. Really happy with that. So just to recap, this week's challenge for this month's Colour Families prompt is Tone on Tone. And you can see that you can choose any colour combination of your choice as long as it fits the Tone on Tone criteria. I just absolutely love this one here. I am thrilled to bits with it. Um, but I do hope that that's given you some ideas as to how you can create um, interesting Tone on Tone backgrounds. Um, don't forget to go and check out Kylie's video this week as well to see what she's been up to because no doubt she'll be um, sharing more um, and very different um, ideas to this one here but if you've enjoyed my video today as always I'd really appreciate a thumbs up do let me know what you think in the comments below but most importantly thanks for watching and take care everyone and for anybody who wants to follow along with um, this colour families um, challenge I'll leave the link to the Facebook group the Mixed Media Emporium in the description box below see you all again soon bye for now